Hi everyone, my name is Philip and welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be installing a Ravencoin full node on Ubuntu 22.04. If that's of interest, you're watching the right video. A question everyone wants to know is, what do you get for running a Ravencoin full node? The first thing you need to know is you don't get paid anything. You run a Ravencoin full node because um, you want to increase the security and stability of the network. For me, I'm a uh, crypt home crypto miner and so it's just a passion of mine. I originally thought about using a Raspberry Pi for this project, but I came to realize I could buy a second-hand computer for less than the cost of setting up the Raspberry Pi, and even a little i3 will probably be about 10 times more powerful than a Raspberry Pi. So let's head over to the CLI and get started. Let's start by talking about the requirements first of all. Uh, so uh, Ravencoin is hosted on ravencoin.org, and you go to wallets download and they have it available for Windows, Mac and Linux. We're only going to be talking about uh, running a Linux node on Ubuntu 22.04 today. My Ravencoin full node is currently consuming 31 gigabytes of disk space, uh, so it's not too bad. Uh, ideally you'd run this on a SSD because um, the database is quite um, IO constrained. A Ravencoin node needs hardly any uh, memory or uh, CPU. This one's running on a little baby uh, HP Pro desk with an i3 CPU um, and uh, a machine with four gigabytes of RAM should be am ample. Uh, this machine is running Ubuntu 2204 um, server um, uh, with a minimal installation. Uh, you can run this on Ubuntu workstation. Uh, I don't have any GUI but um, you can use a GUI if you want to. Now we're going to be spending a lot of time as root, so we'll just sudo straight to that user. Now, as of most software updates, start by doing a apt update. Uh, well, let's try that again, apt update and then apt upgrade, uh, just to make sure your system has uh, got all the key components updated and ready to go. I like running internet connected things in an isolated uh, account, so we're going to create a new account and group to run the service under. Uh, so I'm going to add a new group called for Raven. Um, now this is already set up, but I'm just going to go through the commands so you can see them. So we've created a group. Now we're going to add a new user. Uh, they're going to belong to that same Raven group. We're going to give them the bash, give it the bash shell to use. Uh, and now we're going to be doing most of the setup as that user. So we're just going to change to that user account. Next, we're going to head over to get uh, Ravencoin, the Raven Project's uh, GitHub. And uh, we're going to locate the most recent Linux installation. Uh, this one is 4321. I'm just going to use the generic one with uh, everything in it. Now, because I've already got this installed, I'm actually going to do this in my temp directory so I don't uh, affect my main one. Now, from that website, you'll be able to see the latest release. And we'll just download that using, uh, I'm using wget. Um, now it's a zip file and we need to unzip that. So we're going to use the built-in zip in Python to uh, unzip that. Um, I will put all these steps in the description below, so don't worry too much about uh, following it. Now uh, now that it's extracted, uh, it's actually inside of the zip is a, um, a compressed file. So we're now going to extract that with tar. Now that's extracted, we're going to clean up and remove all the temporary files that um, we created during that process. Okay, I'll just change back to my main installation now. Uh, so this is where you would have been the whole time. Um, the next step is if you have a local directory uh, in the user account called bin, um, bash will automatically add that to the path. So we're going to uh, make a directory called bin. Um, I've already got one, so that, that's why I get that error. We're now going to symlink uh, the two uh, binary files that we need into the new bin directory we created. Um, so these already exist, so you won't get this here, and that's what I get it. So what will happen is as you get new versions of Ravencoin Core, you'll just be able to uh, update these symlinks, and that should make upgrading really easy. Okay, so we're now going to exit the Ravencoin account we've been using, and then go straight back in. The reason we do that is because when bash runs, it'll see there's a bin directory in the local user account and it'll automatically add it to the path for us. We're now going to create a Ravencoin config file. Note you don't actually need to create this for the system to work, but um, uh, I'll show you how to create it because if you soon as you want to create some options, you're going to need to install them. So we're going to create a directory.raven in that user's home directory. 
Once again, my system is already set up, but you won't get that error. Um, and then inside of .raven, you need a file called raven.conf. Now, um, I've sanitized my one, and I'm just, I'm just using one I've called raven example, but your one should be called raven.conf. Uh, in this file, I don't really have many options. So the first one is I don't really know much about uh, Tor. So I just simply turn um, onion addresses off. Because this um, node is going to be um, uh, publicly connected and it has actually has a Ravencoin wallet built into it, I don't really want, a, uh, want my node that's publicly exposed. I don't want to use the wallet on it, so I explicitly turn off all wallet functions. And um, this machine has got four, uh, has got plenty of RAM in it, and uh, I'm actually de dedicating two gigs of RAM for the Ravencoin cache database. So 2,048 kilobytes is two gigs of RAM. The next step is to uh, start running Ravencoin. This is just to test that it's all working okay. My one's already running, so I won't uh, run it again. But uh, just run it, make sure it starts up if you get no errors. If you get any errors, you'll have to try and resolve them. Uh, one thing you can do if you are getting errors is do a tail on .raven forward slash um, debug.log and see if that uh, produces anything that's helpful to you. You now need to set the RavenD up as a systemd service. So we're going to X out and pop back to root and we're going to create a systemd file, etc. cetera, systemd system ravend.service. Uh, so this one's pretty basic. We just create, we tell, we say the service starts after the network has come online. It's a completely bog standard forking daemon. Um, nothing too interesting about that. Once you've created the file, you need to tell uh, systemd that there is uh, some new files or new config changes. So we tell it to reload that. Um, we want the daemon to run at boot. Um, so we tell it to enable the uh, RavenD service. Um, okay, now we can now tell it to start it running. So you do systemctl start ravend.service. Now my one's already running, so uh, nothing much will happen there. Uh, if you need to stop it running, you can say uh, stop. Um, if you want to check on it, you can ask for the status. So what you're really wanting to see is that it says it's active and running and there's no errors here. Uh, if you do get some errors, you can use the journal command. Uh, journal control minus XEU Raven D dot service. Um, so hopefully if there's a problem, you'll see some errors here that will guide you. Also, don't forget about that um, debug log you can check. Now, the next thing I set up is, uh, if you remember, there's that debug log. I set up the system log rotation daemon to uh, rotate that log file so it doesn't keep uh, growing and it's uh, maintained automatically by the system. So we just create a file under Citra log rotate.d called ravend. Uh, so we basically say for uh, this log file, uh, always we trap it in the new user group we created. Uh, we're basically applying the uh, system defaults for the log file, so it'll rotate the file. Most systems would just be um, every week. Um, so if we look at uh, my system, we can see we've got the current uh, Ravencoin debug log, uh, 44K. One from the previous week is 4.1 meg. Uh, the previous week where it did a full sync, um, that's been uh, rotated and compressed up with gzip, and that's 125 meg. So this will keep all the logs um, from filling up the disk space and under control. Uh, now we need to tell the log rotate daemon to uh, restart, so it picks up our new config files. And then we should also check the status after making changes. So we want to see, uh, we basically want to see it's looking something like this, where there's no errors, and it says it's triggered by uh, log rotate dot, um, timer. Um, so it's all set up and ready to go and happy. We node user and uh, do some basic checks. Uh, so the first command we can do is a Ravencoin, Raven hyphen CLI get network info. That'll tell us lots of information about connections to us and connections that we're making. I won't do that one because it exposes a lot of IP addresses. Another one we can ask is for blockchain info about the database we have so far. Um, and uh, I guess you should see stuff about here um, about it. Um, another um, command you can do to check on things is get peer info. This, uh, once again, displays a whole lot of IP addresses, so I won't run it, but um, it'll show you information about um, peers connecting to you. Um, the initial database sync uh, took quite a bit of time. 
uh, I'm trying to remember it, I'd say it took somewhere between sort of three and five days. So um, the system will use uh, pretty much an entire CPU core um, during that initial sync process. Um, and then after that, it drops right off. So I've actually got a Bitcoin node running on this one as well. Um, the, the Ravencoin node you can sort of see is only using sort of two to three percent of the CPU most of the time. If you're having problems, another good command you can do is to do a tail on the debug.log. Um, now, one of the things you'll see is progress equals, and to begin with, it'll be 0 0.0000 and a small number, um, and then it'll slowly build up to progress equals 1.0000. When you're at one, you've finished downloading the whole Ravencoin block um, chain. Um, otherwise, you can sort of see the progress that you're making towards it. You can check how much disk space is being used by Ravencoin. If you go disk use minus H for human um, dot Raven. Uh, uh, so this has printed out the whole thing. So the whole Ravencoin directory is using 31 gigs. You can see the biggest consumer of that is the blocks directory at uh, 29 gigabytes. Once your uh, um, blockchain database is completely downloaded, um, you can go to ravennodes.com forward slash nodes and uh, this displays all the global nodes and if you search for your IP address you should uh, see it appear in this list somewhere. Then you know it's uh, online and working correctly. Before I forget, you need to go into your internet router and port forward TCP 8767 to your Ravencoin node so that other nodes can connect to it to exchange blockchain information. You should now have a Ravencoin node uh, fully operational and up and on the network. So I hope that video was uh, useful. I'm going to leave some other video links just around my head and um, maybe you might find some of them interesting as well. <music>